Hi guys, today I'm just going to quickly take you through the vignetting tool on Sony Vegas Pro. So basically we start by um, dragging this over the image. I'm using a standard picture file because it will allow me to show you the best possible quality um, in our preview screen. But anyway, so what do these what do these functions do? Now the outer radius controls the radius at the edge of our vignette. So if I reduce the number it will bring it inwards, like so and if I expand the number it will send it outwards. I'm just going to bring it inwards quite a bit for the next one which is the inner radius. Now this when fully expanded will just give you a straight basically um, it will take any smoothness out you'll get a very rigid line but you'll get a very very strong spotlight image and you may notice that the feathering tool here no longer has an effect. I, I will go to that in a second. If I reduce this one a little bit the feathering tool will be able to add more feathering to the image. Now, one thing we can do with this one, which I especially like, which I can't really do with cookie cutter, as far as I've seen, is I can change the aspect ratio. Now, that is very, very interesting, and it's very, very nice. So I can have it like that, or I can have it like that. And even cooler still, I can change the rotation, which is really, really groovy. So we've almost got like a, an eye there, which is pretty cool. So I'm just going to give a bit more feathering there. Now, one other thing that I like is the background here. That can also be changed. And you can adjust the transparency. So I can reduce the transparency a little bit or increase it when needed. I'm just going to, um, because it's a sort of co very cold image here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a white background to the image. Just going to add a little bit more feathering. There we go. Just going to add a little bit more inner radius. Take that all away. That's cool. Now I'm just going to expand the outer radius a little bit. And instantly we've got an image which is a little more frosty. Just take that away for a second. Put it back. Take it away. There we go. Um, I don't know really whether or not I particularly use it too much uh, as a tool. I'll just sort of expand a little bit more, but that that can give quite an interesting look anyway, which is quite nice. Um, I'll just reduce the transparency like almost completely. If I do that, when I bring it in, that, that can be quite nice. It's, a, it's almost a complete control over the image. Now this is another thing I haven't mentioned actually. You do have a crosshair over the image. I'm just going to increase our transparency a little bit change the outer radius a bit. Um, you do have a crosshair so that you can actually move the image around. So say I wanted to throw the image into total darkness, just drop it there. There's a quite a grim looking darkness. So if I want a darkness and I wanted the sun to be shining through a little bit more, I could technically add this color over it uh, using this. I could control the rotation is really handy and that will go around the pixel. I moved it to the center of the sun because it looks better there I think. Just expanding it and contracting it. Messing around with feather. Just a slight bit of dawn there. That's really quite nice. But it's it's a pretty cool tool. I'm not entirely sure what I'd particularly use it for. Actually maybe I can make this evening sort a sort of warm evening color. I don't know, I'll have, have, have a quick try at that. Um, just take the aspect out, there we go, move it in. And just slide it all around a little bit. I don't know, I don't think this one's going to work very well, but it's always worth a shot just to see what you can do with, uh, to do with the equipment, should I say. Just reduce that a little bit. Not particularly great at the moment, but I reckon if with a little bit of time I could get that looking quite nice. Anyway, it's a nice tool and it comes with some pretty good presets, um, such as the initial vignette, which is just standard lens. Then we've got your edges vignetting, which is rigid edges down the side. Pretty cool. Um, then you've got highlight, which I don't know really what's for, but I see this in many videos where like the mouse goes around and it's got a highlight around it. So I guess it'd be use useful for those sort of videos. Um, on top of that, it has a spotlight function. So you can do your bond sequence where you walk across the screen. 
uh, get to get the blood to come down and stuff like that. Um, that's that's kind of handy and fun to throw in there. And all of these can be um, all of these can be remotely controlled. Although there doesn't seem to be an animate function, so I'm not entirely sure whether or not I would be able to animate that. Um, I'm just going to quickly add one to the image to um, find that one out. So if I drag this one across like that, try again, see if we've got an animate function. No, we don't. That's very peculiar. I guess we can't use that one in this way then. That's very interesting. Uh, I didn't know that, but we've got our white vignette as well. And one of the problems is as I've, dra I've dragged it over the initial image, but if we drag a white vignette over, we get back to our frosty snowscape, which is quite good, although the white is a little too intense. Make it a little bit more bluish and reduce that a little bit. There we go. And we're back to our frosty self. But that is the original photograph. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the vignette tool. Um, there's a little bit more that you can do with it, but that's a very, very good basic tutorial, I hope. And I hope that's really helpful. Anyway, you guys have a really good day. Take care and I uh, hope you've had a really good holiday. Bye.